Hey Vineet, how's it going? Hey Sanjay, going good. Good to see you. Good to be here, finally doing this episode now. Absolutely. So, UX uh, director at Postman. Quite a long journey you've had with Postman. I'm recalling the conversation we had during the meetup last week. Almost eight and a half plus years with the Postman. So it's very rare that we come across people who have worked for so long for one company these right. days. It's very rare. <laughs> so t- tell me a little bit about that journey, please. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like a lot of short stints before joining Postman. So Postman is the aberration, a good aberration, uh, and that must be said. So I'm an engineer by education. I've always been a tinkerer all my life, and computers was my thing, just enamored by what you could do just sitting in a room all by yourself. And that's why I decided to do that for my engineering course. I feel like academics in computers sort of like took the want to code out of me. And I didn't really feel like doing that anymore. I feel like computers for me was always a thing to play with, not study necessarily. (laughs) So when I came out of engineering, I was looking for my first job and I wanted to be close to technology, but not really coding myself. And I think that's how I ended up in design. Finally, I did a bunch of odd jobs, like for the first couple of uh, gigs that I had, I was doing a bit of data on the side. I was doing a bit of visualizations. I was doing a bit of web design. And finally, I decided to take some time off, focus on learning the fundamentals of UX. It was pretty new at that phase. Like, I feel like this is back in 2013 and like, there weren't a lot of colleges teaching, you know, UX and stuff. So it is pretty much like you go on the web and you learn yourself. And I had the opportunity to do was actually just build an app with a bunch of my friends. And that's interestingly what got me my first design job. And I think that's fundamentally shaped my career ever since. I started at a services firm, SourcePits, back in 2013 was probably, it was an all-star design team back then. So many great mentors to learn from. You'd have typography experts, you'd have like the interaction design experts. So while it was a very short stint, it really exposed me to a lot of things. And it's a... I think a peer group that I'm still in touch with to this very day. So really appreciate that I'm there. Jumped into building a zero to one product right after. Had an acquaintance who had some money, had an idea, wanted to, you know, start something. And I was like, let's go for it. You know, nothing to lose here. So me and a bunch of colleagues at that time, we all went skin deep with the idea. And I think we took a lot of the mindset that we operate in in a services company into building that product and because of that it failed really hard so like six months in we were out of money no one's getting salaries and luckily enough uh, i had the opportunity to at that point of time freelance for postman my boss at the time aditi she was the one who hired me for my first design job so it was quite you know, serendipitous that she found me at that point, built out their first API documentation product while freelancing for them, loved the vibe of working with the team, the early team there. And I think that's what, you know, made me stick so long. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, it's unreal to be honest that, you know, you freelance for a company, you know, and you like the vibe and you join and then you stay there for eight and a half years. Yeah. Then you went on to become a director, a UX director of that company. It's crazy. Absolutely. Yeah, it's incredible. And also, uh, the kind of work that Postman does is also quite different from all the other, uh, you know, companies. And for some, uh, somebody to come from a design, non-design background and then do design at a non-conventional company. And also, like before this conversation, I was also doing a lot of research about Postman. Then that's mm-hmm. when I realized, okay, this is based out of Bangalore. Right. And it is an Indian company. Right. The branding, the way it looks, the way it is, it mm-hmm. never looked like an Indian company to me. I'll, I'll take that compliment and pass <laughs> it for sure. <laughs> yeah. It was a beautifully done. Uh, I love the branding. Right. I'm a branding guy. I work on brand strategy. So, so subtle. Right. Yet it is not invisible. Yeah. It's, it's very nicely done. 
we call it retro futuristic i feel like we wanted to play a bit with mm. the way the brand was portrayed not be too serious in the way we come across as like a developer tool you should feel like a tool that you can tinker with and i think that's where it came from obviously like all you know kudos to the folks who set the brand you know up for success aditi was part of that early days in postman where you know, she came up with the brand and all the folks in the design team who worked on it since special shout out to shruti venkatesh she's an amazing illustrator helps us so much in evolving the brand going forward as well that's amazing tell me a little bit about your day like what does the day at postman i mean day of a ux director look like yeah this one's a tough one i feel like it it swings wildly Okay. Um, a really hectic day is just a lot of conversations, a lot of meetings, a lot of getting people together to find consensus on something. On more structured days where I have time for myself, I think the way I distribute my time is spend at least you know 10 to 20% of the day listening to users, and that could be through. internal channels of feedback it could be through you know someone you know as an acquaintance it could be through listening into user conversations that have been recorded it could be through having your own conversations with users that you have scheduled in advance and then i i try and keep some time aside in the day maybe another 10% to write down thoughts uh, because i feel like in conversations you might have an idea you jot it down somewhere but you need some time to flesh it out more and really figure what you can do with this idea and i say idea very loosely it might not be you know a design thing that i want to bring into postman it might be how we operate as a team it might be my own reflections on how i should operate as a leader it could be feedback for my immediate team sometimes candid that i don't want to give in the heat of the moment and hence i need to structure so 10% of the time to just like consolidate and write if possible i think a significant majority of my time is still spent building consensus so like a 40% would be holding crit meetings or like reviews or giving people some kind of guidance on like the approach that they're taking for a certain design and the rest 40% i would sort of all bucket as maybe miscellaneous so on some days when i have the luxury i'd love to just get into figma myself and just like play around a bit on some days a significant portion of it might go into the more boring documentation work sometimes right like you just need to write down how you're doing this week how are you meeting your goals how you how's your team doing and yeah so like the 40% is like very varied interesting words i'm going to pick up from what you just said <laughs> right. listening to users yeah and then discussing approach with the team members like these are the things that you know we we don't really let's say there's no value attached to it right like there's no number attached to it yeah so let's talk about also the decisions that you take mm-hmm. and also the listening part of it that you just mentioned do you please elaborate a little bit about what do you mean by listening to users right i i mean it in the simplest form possible and when i'm reading you know a tweet someone wrote about their experience with postman or i'm looking at a github issue that a user raised where he has critical feedback on how you know postman is just not working for them or whatever at that point i'm not trying to solution necessarily i'm not trying to solve the problem i think it's really important at that point to just like zone out and empathize and i think in terms of like building developer tools that sometimes that can be hard sometimes they're describing a workflow that you might not have experienced yourself there's some follow up activities where you got to go try it out yourself okay so this is what they were talking about it can be really challenging to stay away from solutioning but i feel like if you do it often enough it becomes a bit of a habit and maybe there are some frameworks that can you know help you out right like do you want to write down the experience that the user had not in their words but your words of like how a user would experience the app etc without again any intention to solution but you know the the frameworks part to each their own i feel like uh, some people can just do it in their minds and and it's fine i think the solutioning bit is really something that happens much later 
you listen, you consolidate, you assess, and then you act upon it much, much, much later. And and the reason I say that and it, how it applies specifically to Postman is that when you're building a product for like 30 million plus developers, it can be very, very, very costly to take instinctive decisions based on a single user or even like a smaller subset of users. There are feature requests in Postman that we've sat on for like years just because, you know, we feel like we haven't really understood the root cause of the symptom that they're trying to explain uh, at the end of the day. So every you know day a new piece of feedback might come on the same item but at that point again it's very important not to react and just say you know say that we're going to go build this and it's probably very different from how we used to operate back in the early days where it was much more hands-on with early customers etc but yeah i think with the scale that postman has managed to achieve also comes a lot of like responsibility 100 percent. like uh, you have like you guys are everywhere. <laughs> you talk about APIs, you guys are everywhere. Right. You know, so it's, it's crazy that you listen to the users after scaling. And then, of course, that's the loop that we have to work on as designers and as a company as well for a business. Yeah. So let's talk about the approach part of it now. So mm-hmm. when you discuss with your team members that you said that you discuss their approach to a certain problem. So what are the ingredients or what are the key aspects that you look into when you talk about approach? I think the cornerstone of any conversation needs to be a real world user pain point. Like any day-to-day activity that we as a design team operate on, you know, the cornerstone needs to be a real world user pain point. And I think all the more it might seem very mundane but like it's all the more important for me in my role today to voice that and make sure my team is aligned towards that because if i consider the daily work of an ic in my team they're working in a small little corner of this big api platform that's postman it's very easy to get siloed into a couple of features that they're maintaining or more tactical goals that they are working on and it's very hard to sometimes zone out so my interactions with my teams are sometimes opportunities to give them that perspective not just give it myself but force them to think along the lines themselves and come to that realization themselves and when i say make like a user pain point the cornerstone again it could be here's a workflow that a user is trying to do and this is the outcome that they're trying to get to and this is the frustration they're facing or and that's what we're trying to solve for or it could be that here's the kinds of applications they use when they work with software but here's postman and here's how it's different and this is why it's a problem so again i won't be too specific about a framework or a way of going about it necessarily because each team might have their own but i think that's super critical once you have that set out we try and definitely spend time ensuring that we've explored enough so you started from a pain point have you really delved deep enough have you gone and had the kind of user conversations needed to broaden your perspective have you played around with enough ideas to really reflect on the kind of solutions that work or don't. Have you conceptualized wildly enough to not let your existing current biases limit the solutions that you're proposing, etc. And I typically stop there. I try to not be too prescriptive in, okay, here's a bunch of bullet points that you need to go do now. I prefer to let them come up with it yourself. And typically I find that if you've anchored them on a user pain point, you've ensured that they've discovered enough, teams generally come to the right solutions and the right way of going about executing on that themselves. Right. And this also talks about you as a leader, because now you're talking about, I'm just going through your journey again, a time where you were learning from all that, you know, the all-star team that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then somewhere during that process you also probably felt that that you know you were also given that freedom right. to explore your own ideas and your take on how the solution to that problem could be 
right while you observe all the things that you have to to do that so yeah 100% i i feel like i'm not even being too objective about whether that's the right approach or not it's it's just one that works for me it works for the team and that's how i like you know doing things i've definitely had a lot of autonomy in how i've worked with ux in my career i try to give people that autonomy as well though again there are specific situations where you need to step in and you need to give people the right conditions to succeed and then you might be a bit more hands on of course as a leader when you're leading a team what are the challenges that you face like <laughs> you're giving autonomy yes but i want to know the challenges that you face i think this call is going to bleed over by the time i finish this question <laughs> um, i think what i've realized in my growth and you know my formative years as a leader has been that the single most important trait as a leader is communication at the end of the day right you might have all the right ideas about the kind of product that you're be- you're supposed to be building the way the team is supposed to operate to build that product the way the team is supposed to continue maintaining that product the way the team is supposed to ideate and be creative and you know explore new horizons for the product but if you cannot articulate and you cannot communicate and the team cannot build trust in you and the team cannot align behind your vision and the team can't be sufficiently motivated to act on that in the same way that you would have acted then it doesn't matter all of that thinking and pre work that you might have done that doesn't matter and i think we take for granted sometimes the forums we have as leaders to do these things right like i remember in my early days we had a set way of going about things right like there were weekly team sings or like daily stand ups and like that's that was your forum and that was how you're supposed to communicate and that that was just how you know we learned from like other teams and other best practices that used to do it but we didn't really understand the context behind it like why does that make sense what kind of communication is relevant for this kind of forum etc so now i tend to be a bit more creative in the way i try to do that right i i think what's important is like a feedback loop first and foremost if you've communicated something how do you gauge whether that method of communication and the content that you communicated did it really receive was it received in the right way so do you have the right feedback loops within your team that might be with your direct reports that might be with your extended team that might be with your cross functional stakeholders how do you ensure that you were able to communicate the right way and this is just again a very personal opinion but i feel it serves me very well to be extremely generous and unabashed about asking for feedback and obviously being very 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 generous when you receive it take everything with an open mind and i feel then you have the right recipe to succeed in like communicating effectively so that's probably the single biggest challenge in my opinion i think the second biggest challenge and this has evolved over the years is your idea of what a great team is and should be like and what it should aspire towards and i think it will continue to grow as i continue to grow as a leader and i gain more experience in and in, in the kind of things that we work on as well as the kind of people that i work with i think there is a lot of power in diversity you know a very homogenous team can sometimes limit your ideas but at the same time you need to understand the cost of too much diversity the cost it takes to align different minded people towards like the same goal etc right and yeah. as long as you understand that balance then you're sort of good again no prescriptive answers or solutions i think everyone needs to have this journey by themselves to figure it out but yeah i think that's a constantly evolving thing as well the third big challenge probably is in helping people realize that they can do more they can be more they can aspire more in some sense and so let me take a typical scenario right you have like an ic and you're charting out like a growth path for them and and you need to have this discussion every once in a year it's your focus and like here's your raise etc but you need to give them very very critical feedback or whatever right now if it's your direct report you might have way more opportunities to do it right you have a lot more interactions your 
catching up every day probably or having having weekly performance things etc whatever right but if it's someone you get a chance to meet once in a while and you have a critical feedback that you want to give them how do you give that in a way where they are shown a future version of themselves that they aspire to be and they just want to get that and you're not spoon feeding it to them you're not telling them go to x and then you'll get to y you're telling them here's what you could be and right. we'll make sure that the both of us we understand that and we are looking at the same thing and as long as we both see how valuable that is like you will figure out you know whatever it takes to get that uh, at the end of the day it, it obviously has a bit of mix in like how i communicate this as well so maybe my first point is relevant here as well but yeah this has probably been my third biggest challenge as a leader amazing points that you have mentioned because i pick up like three things from your three points like one is open minded mm-hmm. about you know and generous about taking and giving feedback like that's incredible for you to say that because you have team members you know people out there are going to listen to this podcast as well and for a design leader to come and say that you know or being open minded and be generous about taking feedback as well not only giving feedback so yeah. that's that's i think that's really commendable what you do at uh, postman and second the team yep. that you're building right you're building a team now that's something that a lot of people do struggle with startups mm-hmm. i'm saying startup because you've seen through that journey right? Right, right you've been through that journey and it's really good to see that you've built the startup and you've built your team right and also the third point that you're accommodating each and every person of that team being mindful of what you're saying to them what you're communicating to them how you're communicating to them right. it's it's really nice to see that but one thing i would like to ask here is about building the team mm-hmm. because and i've also personally experienced when i was hiring for my own independent business i struggled to find the right talent and even today i get to hear from so many right that it's so difficult to find the right person yeah so how did you go about that i mean i would relate as well it is difficult <laughs> i'm not denying <laughs> that i can tell you what's worked for us and maybe what's not worked i think what we have realized over time what's worked for us is obviously the basics right like hiring for culture fit ensuring that these are people who have the curiosity to learn you're working as a designer building a developer tool you're open minded enough to accept the fact that you are not the primary user you're trying whatever you can to empathize and be in the shoes of the primary user so you have that necessary curiosity you're like a good team player so you have all that basic cultural match set and then they have the room to grow from experience right and we have the patience they have the opportunities and overall the right environment exists for them to grow i think the second thing that's i i won't say this has worked but this is just my philosophy today i do think that it's a lot easier to build high output effective teams when you've already formed a certain level of trust with the person you're either hiring or you're joining so this could be in a couple of ways right like one i think referral networks and i mean true referrals right like not like someone just randomly sent you a profile but like this is someone someone else has worked with they can vouch for them etc or like building on the network that your team already has or you as a leader have whatever at the end of the day to have an opportunity to be aware of the kind of work that someone's doing i don't know years before you have hired them is incredibly valuable so you start from a certain position of trust and you're open enough to know where like you don't know this xyz about this person and hence you're open to failing some that part but you're better than like just starting from scratch altogether i think the third bit is ensuring that individual team members see each other as part of a team and not as individuals all the time at the end of the day so traditionally this would be through whatever i don't know team building activities you want to do etc interestingly enough a lot of postman scale happened during the pandemic so and that came with all the problems that you know that entailed terrible onboarding no face time no real world interactions outside of work etc so i think especially now that 
we are slowly getting the opportunity to get back to office build a sort of like rhythm around it that face time has become all the more valuable not to work together but to get to know each other better as people and build that trust all the more and make sure that it reflects in the kind of work that they're doing right so you measure the outcomes by the work but like the input can be non work related things as well to get the team to gel these are probably three of my things yeah and i would also like to touch upon the hiring aspect here mm-hmm. because you've already answered quite a few things here yeah for the let's say the designers who would want to apply right and first of all are there any openings <laughs> at postman there are um we are definitely looking for more designers that mm-hmm. fit a certain set of criteria that i think okay. i've talked about in the past before but i'll reiterate yes. so obviously an insane level of curiosity is super important i think that's the best recipe for someone to thrive at postman familiarity with a technical problem space but more importantly and more specifically developer tooling if you've been a developer yourself and you can empathize with the kind of work that they do with apis that's going to go a super long way and more importantly they understand the vision of the kind of product that we're trying to build as long as these criteria match we are practically hiring for every role out there possible and if not today we will be in 6 months or like a year so it's probably good to have a chat either way i think what i'm also very i would like to believe i'm very encouraging of is i like to get to know people irrespective of whether you plan to work with us today or not you know i think it's super valuable to use any opportunities we have to meet each other to get to know each other better understand what our own personal philosophies are how that aligns with the work that we're doing it just uh, that goes back to my earlier point of like you already know this person when you decide to hire them right so and let's talk about the portfolio for a bit here so what is the kind of portfolio that you look at or what are the things that stand out for you and what are the things that don't stand out okay so i guess the stuff that doesn't stand out are the more generic templates and i don't mean templates in the way the portfolio is structured necessarily at the end of the day we know every portfolio is going to highlight a couple of projects that someone's worked on a couple of products that they were like releases they have shipped a couple of you exchanges that they were able to make in like the time that they are at a company so i'm not talking about that necessarily i'm talking about the way you talk about your contributions too there are a lot of like boot camps and workshops around like how to build like the perfect portfolio etc and i feel like that's gotten to a point where you've templatized everything and i i really don't know what's what you're telling is genuine or not in some sense so I really love formats that stand out. Like I've had someone throw in a user conversation that they had, right? And like quotes from it, etc. I've had someone send me a Postman collection as like a resume, a set of links in that as a a portfolio of their work, etc. So, I think it's super important to understand that if you really want a job, you need to sell the people why you're the best fit for the job. And I think in today's market people look at it as here's a bunch of companies I should apply to. This is who I am. This resume defines me. This portfolio defines me. I'm just going to spam like 15 people and see what sticks. It probably works at the end of the day. You know, when the market's hot, the supply is there, it probably works. but there's nothing as refreshing as someone who's understood what you're looking for the kind of vision that you have the product that you're trying to build and they're there telling you exactly why they're the best person right like that that just inspires so much confidence at the end of the day so i'm not you know going to go into like the specifics of the portfolio itself but that's probably what stands out an understanding of what postman's trying to do interesting thank you for saying that i think uh, it will be super helpful for people who want to apply yeah. and also not only at postman i think this goes for every company out there also i think guys so listen to this at inputs that okay. uh, vinita has talked about very very crucial inputs and before we end this episode i want to ask one last question yeah. to you actually two two questions <laughs> okay so 
So the first one goes like you've been leading the team. What is it that you enjoy about your job? I think at my position and my role today, and this might not really, how do I say, resonate with the value the organization that necessarily sees from me. But what I truly enjoy is sort of connecting the drops, like, you know, weaving the threads together. So I hear great ideas from one team. I hear of the work happening in another team. And my role allows for a certain level of that. And I think the trust and influence I've managed to build with cross-functional leaders across the board also gives me some level of visibility. So to be able to say that, okay, this person's working on this idea, you're working on this idea, this person's actually executing on an idea, get these three together because something magical is going to come out of it, just feels so rewarding because that work is going to happen irrespective of whether you exist or not, but you have managed to be a compounding factor in the kind of like user outcome you have. So I I genuinely derive a lot of joy in that. I have no idea how valuable it actually is to the organization. I'm going to deviate here a bit and recall the conversation that we've had or from the talk that, uh, you know, I've listened to during the design land meetup in Bangalore. So I'm going to pull in something from there. So you mentioned that you also encourage uh, small teams within the organization. Mm to sort of start something on their own, pitch to investors, you you cut them loose, right? right? And you encourage them to go through that process all right. on their own. You will be mentoring them, of course, yes. So is it something related to what you just mentioned? Maybe not 100%. So like, just to clarify, I, I think that what we try and do Postman is we realize that there is a certain way of going about building a zero to one product. There's a certain way of going about scaling that to, you know, 10 or 100. And it's a completely different ball game taking that to enterprise. So what we are trying to do is standardize some of these playbooks. And what that means for zero to one products is actually eliminating some of the constraints that come from working in a large organization. So what's a good setup that allows you to think in the mindset of a startup and fear for your survival and really get the best out of that. Not necessarily pitch to investors per se, it it still will be funded by Postman at the end of the day, but it's a mindset, I think, that really allows new ideas to thrive and for us to be able to validate it quickly, you know, before just having org-wide consensus that, yeah, Postman should build it and then suddenly not seeing a lot of traction in the market. I think my point around being the connector of dots in some way can lend to a certain amount of validation that these like teams can receive maybe but beyond that i do think that the zero to one product you know validation cycle is very autonomous right i I don't think that any new product in postman necessarily needs inputs from me on like how they're going about it i expect them to have understood their niche audience well enough to be able to tell me what they think is better for their users than me doing it the other way around. Now, it's a different ballgame if they come in with me and saying that, no, we want to build it for 30 million users in Postman. And then I will say, I'm probably the best person to guide you and that's all right. So it's sort of like, you know, the other way around if you're building a zero to one product. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. So coming to the last question for today. So what are you curious about these days? Ooh, um, I feel like there's always some weird new, I don't know, roguelike or strategy game that I'm obsessed with. I want to say I like indies, but I like a certain level of finesse in my (laughs) indies, right? But I do think I spend a significant amount of my time playing games, which probably, you know, not a good idea to tell this on like a podcast, (laughs) but that's that's the truth, guys. Um, (laughs) I do think that's shaped the way I design, though, which whether for better or for worse, is something I find constructive in my, in my life. I also love my fantasy fiction, so I'm probably just obsessing over the lore of some weird world that this author has introduced in their series of books. Shout out to the Malazan series, that's what I'm reading right now, for probably for the second time in a row. I'm, I think constantly, and and this might be a consequence of where I am in my career, I feel like, you know, the the team scale really quickly and my responsibilities have grown really quickly and I compare myself to peers who've been in the industry for 20 plus years and I'm like, 
constantly there's, there's a lot of imposter syndrome and yeah. so i do think i like to spend some portion of my curiosity into feeding habits that can help me learn how to be a better leader a team member a mentor whatever the company and the organization requires of me that day may might be a strategist on one day might be a you know how do i tell this person that they need to get better at their craft or whatever right so it could be a variety of topics but yeah that's probably another thing maybe one last obsession and this is a very you know i, I don't want to say this is a long standing obsession or whatever but i got a <laughs> fuji camera recently so oh, i'm just nice you know going wild with like the recipes that are possible <laughs> but, yeah cool fun conversation and thank you for being so transparent about you know your approach and your thought process and how you lead the team and how you also learn during the process mm-hmm. thank you for sharing your ideas and your thoughts on the podcast today thank you for taking your time out and doing this thank you sanjay for the opportunity i really really hope that someone listens to this and finds it relatable i don't need it to be educational but <laughs> Especially if people can find it relatable, um, that would be a big win for me. Yeah, this definitely is going to be relatable because I have picked up a few things just now. Main thing about the building teams. I think I've I've definitely picked up a few things from here. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, Anja. <laughs> Thank you. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. I have a couple of things to tell you today. So one, Design X Studio has launched its own Telegram channel. It's called Introduction to Design. In that community, you can find a lot of free resources daily quizzes that we will be posting and questions that you can solve every single day and there'll be doubt solving and a lot of free live sessions where i will take on various topics and i'll explain that from the basic to a very advanced level so do join the community so that you can benefit from all of this and the second thing is again titled introduction to design which is the book that i have launched recently and it is now available for pre-order this basically talks about uh, the mindset that is required for you to start your journey in design and also uh, this features a lot of exercises that will help you to build those behavioral abilities that the design entrance exams look for i'll leave these two links in the description below and that's it for today thank you